My name is Johanna Russ, and I'm a Senior Archival Specialist here at Harold Washington Library Center and Special Collections of Chicago Public Library. The Park District, Chicago Park District, and the Chicago Public Library entered into an intergovernmental agreement to transfer the Park District archives to the library. And they'd been working on this, I've been working here seven years, and they had been working on this for several years before I started, because the lawyers on each side were kind of getting the agreement hammered out exactly as they wanted it. The Park District does still use the materials in their work, so they wanted a digital copy before they gave us the hard copy. So there are lots of moving parts and things we had to arrange. So working with my staff here and with Julia, we kind of, I landed on accessing the broad history kind of through six, we're calling them icons, essentially six park icons. So there's the lakefront, there's the Museum of Science and Industry. There's the Field House, Garfield Park Conservatory, Soldier Field, and Lincoln Park Zoo. So these are all kind of iconic things essential to Chicago, essential to the Chicago Park District that a lot of people would be able to relate to. That's the other thing. Our audience, being the Chicago Public Library, our audience is everyone. So it's like we have to have something that can be relatable to everyone, appeal to everyone, and also kind of tell the story we're trying to tell. We were lucky enough to have some grant funding to hire a conservator. The project that is depicted in the exhibit deals with a set of 18 drawings of what is now the Museum of Science and Industry. The drawings at the time were for what was the Palace of Fine Arts for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. And so these are, were a set of 18 drawings, different, um, different views of the building. It was, they were used in constructing the building. And they're very large, oversized. I think the one that's out there in the frame is about seven feet tall. And these 18 drawings were all rolled up on a tube together in one big set. And they were just tears, there was wrinkles. They had retained the curl of, of being rolled up. And so our conservator came in two to three days a week for about six months and she was able to flatten them all out, clean them, repair any mends, fill losses. So if there was like a corner missing or something, she would put in a complimentary paper so that they would be handled more easily in the future. The whole process is described in the exhibit, like every single step along the way. Julia and I worked pretty closely together to go through the images, go through the drawings, um, pick which ones we thought worked well. And then I wrote the first drafts of the text panels and the labels, kind of explaining everything, sent them over to Julia. She sent back lots of really good edits and suggestions, and we went through that back and forth process many times. Um, I also used my staff here who helped advise people who have done exhibits before. Past exhibits were very helpful. And then we have an exhibits unit who's responsible for um, the, the mounting, the installation, that piece. They don't exactly do the curation because they aren't the subject experts, but they have a lot of ideas about what can work well. And so I worked closely with them too in terms of how to display and present some of our ideas that we wanted to get across. COVID-19 struck, just as it has for so many people and plans. Um, this was originally supposed to open in June of 2020. The library shut down in mid-March, which is right when we were kind of getting straight into the installation phase. When we returned to work in 
June, late May, early June, we were told to kind of pick back up where we started or where we stopped and, and go from there and continue to work as if we would someday have an exhibit. And so we did that. You know, we had a, an outside framer come in to help us frame the really oversized items. We had the in-house exhibits unit doing the framing of, of that stuff. We had the graphics department involved doing some reproductions for us, doing design of, of the text panels and the uh, promotional literature. All these different people were involved and we just kind of continued as if it was going to open. And then we did, we opened, which was exciting. It's, it's a little bit of a weird time to open an in-person exhibit. And so we hope that we're able to have the exhibit up for maybe longer than we had originally planned so that maybe a few months from now it might be a safer thing to come and visit. People like the parks. People love to be outside, especially recently with the, with the COVID-19. That's one of the few places we could be safely. And I think people really rediscovered or discovered for the first time the, the parks near them and the park district and all that they have to offer. But I wanted people to kind of understand that they didn't just happen. They weren't just naturally occurring places like, oh, here's a, here's a green space, here's a lagoon. It's like, no, in, in most cases, that lagoon didn't exist. They had to dig it out. Or like with the lakefront, but the land didn't even exist. They made the land, they filled in the lake to make the land to build the park. And that doesn't mean that it feels less natural or that the trees or the grass or the flowers are, are less meaningful. I think it's more meaningful that, that Chicago has historically prioritized the creation through a lot of effort and money of, of these public spaces for the public. <laughs>